the cardiac muscle of the ventricles will depolarize during the QRS complex because the Purkinje fibers have relayed the electrical impulses throughout the walls of the ventricles. The ventricles will not immediately undergo systole because once again there is a delay in the time when the electrical impulse travels over the sarcolemma through T-tubules to the SR to release calcium, etc. So ventricular systole will start part way through the QRS complex and then end part way through the T wave because of the plateau of cardiac muscle. When the ventricles begin their systole in the QRS complex, a number of very important events happen in a split second. First, as the pressure in the ventricles rises, blood attempts to travel from the ventricles through the AV valves to the atria because the atria are empty. But this blood then catches the cusps of the AV valves and forces them shut. And so the AV valves shut in the QRS complex when the pressure in the ventricles exceeds the pressure in the atria. As the blood which attempted to pass through the open AV valves is redirected, there is turbulence which will make noise. And this is the first heart sound. The first heart sound is caused by the turbulence in the blood as the AV valve shut in the QRS complex. For a split second, the ventricles are a closed chamber because both the AV valves and semilunar valves are shut. And so then the pressure rises and rises and rises. When the pressure in the ventricles exceeds the pressure in the vessels, this would be the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, then the semilunar valves are forced open and blood can be ejected from the ventricles. This occurs at the very end of the QRS complex, that the semilunar valves open and ventricular ejection can begin. During the ST segment going into the T wave, the ventricles are in systole, the semilunar valves are open, and blood is being ejected from the ventricles. The volume of blood in the ventricles is then dropping from the full point of the ventricles at the end of their diastole. This is known as the end diastolic volume. When the ventricles were done their diastole, they were as filled with blood as they would get this cardiac cycle. And as the ventricles empty, they will uh, end in their end systolic volume. This is as empty as ventricles will become once they have ejected all their blood. So this ventricular ejection will uh, remove a stroke volume, perhaps 70 milliliters of blood, and take the ventricles from their fullest point, their end diastolic volume, to their empty point, their end systolic volume. During the T wave, the ventricles will repolarize. As they do so, their systole ends. The semilunar valves will be forced shut because blood will attempt to return from the pulmonary trunk and the aorta into the right and left ventricles going from an area of high pressure to low. The turbulence in the blood which results when uh, the blood which was attempting to return to the ventricles is redirected will create the second heart sound. And so if our heart sounds during a cardiac cycle are lubbed up lubbed up. The lub is the turbulence in the blood when the AV valve shut in the QRS complex, while the dup is the turbulence in the blood when the semilunar valve shut in uh, the T wave. At the end of this cardiac cycle, there are no new electrical events. All four chambers are in diastole, and all four valves are closed, and thus a new cardiac cycle can begin.